So yeah. some of the things that I felt were learning objectives for you was understanding momentum. These are the moments where you really want to like come out and do something strong to be able to really tilt the other team and finish off the game. And a lot of the games at your rank and higher is going to be all about controlling that momentum shift. Definitely, you mentioned that one of the things that you deal with that's troubling you is overheating. And the next two learning objectives I have are based on overheating. It's repeating awesome. certain angles, which yeah. as an opper is a very dangerous thing to do. I want to make sure that we have good understanding of why it's bad or what's our alternative. There's a high risk, especially with this weapon right here on the timings that you're going to get, that they could be rushing you here. Like as soon as I heard running, I would have gotten the fuck out of dodge. You have way more confidence than me. <laughs> way more confidence than me. Yeah, I'm very ego. That's it, what I mean. I work it a lot. It, it's good to do this though, it, because this will carry you out of ranks. I think one of the reasons why I struggle in ranks is because I don't do shit like this. Because I'm always thinking, what's the risk versus reward on this? At this point right here, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, when I hear the running noise here, I hear minimum two. And I'm thinking, they're on eco, they're looking for close range fights. This fight, you hit the shot, but it's advantageous to him. Right, you're creating an opportunity and sometimes this could be an unnecessary opportunity. I feel as though, if you're playing against tens, you'll probably get killed here. Of course. Right. Yeah. Playing at Stroud, you might get killed there. <laughs> yeah. In fact, they're never going to swing you like that. So the general rule of thumb, even with rifles, is never repeat the same angle twice. And ego's good as long as it's <laughs> confidence. Because if you think about it, they're on a full buy right now, right? Yeah. I think that's a crosshair placement thing. I didn't yeah, know the exact spot that they were going to strafe out either, so that's yeah. more experience. The second one, you can, you can, you get away with. The third one is no. Yeah. Okay. And part of how you avoid peeking the same angle twice is by changing elevation. Just like in Overwatch, just like in Valorant, if you're looking down on someone, that headshot hitbox is a little bit easier to hit. This is good. I like your fallback. You just stay right here. Whenever you have an op in this game or Counter-Strike or anything like that, I want you to think of the op as the queen of the board. Whenever you have the queen on the board, she controls lane, she controls diagonal distances, straight distances, all that good stuff. And you can literally put the queen in the middle of the board and say, you can't go here anymore. She has a one shot kill. She's deadly. She's powerful. People are afraid of her all the time. That's literally the queen on the board. So whenever you have the op, you're trying to deny space or make them have to spend utility and things like that to be able to take space from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On defense, you're a toll booth operator. If you want to go down this path, it's going to cost you something because this whole line of sight right here, this is your playground and they yeah. cannot go by it unless you say otherwise. So what they need to do is they need to use utility from Reyna, for example, to flash over or KO, or they need to spend lives or damage to be able to get past and you and get to this, this spot on the map. So you standing right here, you're saying you can't take B site unless you want to die or unless you want to use something. Here is the protocol though, okay? Your op takes precedence over anyone else on the map, okay? If you okay. say in a team environment, for example, if you say, I want to go here and work a pick, you're going there and working a pick and no one's speaking over you, right? Unless yeah. your IGL tells you you have to do something, you have complete control. This is really good. This is actually something I want to use for content because I've been trying to explain sliver peeking and sliver peeking is basically just choosing an angle that makes it really, really difficult for people to shoot back at you. And you really, in this angle in particular, simply just need to get information. You don't even have to get a kill. If you get a kill, it's a bonus. All you really need is an info. And the good thing about sliver peeks is that this gives you an option to escape. So in this particular situation, you can always just pull off to the right. Right. Yeah. Okay, if you get pressured. So these peaks are really good, especially with an op, and even good as a rifler just peeking in and out, usually um, uh, going AD strafing back and mm -hmm. forth through the wall just to get information to know what's mm -hmm. going on. As soon as I heard the res, 
I feel like I want to fall back because they're probably rushing here. If we're looking at it, there's two people there for sure. And there's 47 seconds left on the clock. So I'm thinking positioning wise, I need to get back behind sight if I can back here yeah. and play this long range angle. I would get a kill off of the right hand side and then I would move over to the left and take my second fight against this angle over here. Yeah. Okay. This is not bad either. You're falling back to your team. It works. And just using the smoke that you're doing right now to be able to path yourself back to the back site and have a long range fight would be an ideal way of doing it too. You decide yeah. to overwatch here, which is cool. And you, you do really well with this. You think this is all good. This is all fine. Okay, so this is where I make the comment. I think Omen is working on 200 MS in his brain. You hear them say? Yeah. Oh, thank God he threw the smoke, eh? Yeah. <laughs> really good smoke. Really good smoke. And you asked for it and everything. It's like, I asked what him, the hell? Play my contact. If you see anybody on the mini map, smoke it for you. He smokes it after the fact. And he's, that's a bad smoke, too. <laughs> okay, so your first peak was from here. Mm -hmm. Your second peak is going to be right here. This is good. Okay. Okay. This is good. Okay. Your next peak, I like you updrafting and changing elevation to here. So oh, that when okay. they come up, your next fight's going to be right over here. Okay. Okay. The other yeah. option would be to updraft into heaven at this point. Change elevation. Okay. That's nice. Okay. The reason why I don't like this peak is because it is on the same Trim line. line. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So your protocol is never the same angle. And mm -hmm. if you have the option, change elevation. Okay. That's the power of Jet. She can change elevation a lot. Oh, one more. Yeah, it's the exact same line. Yeah. There you go. So, you first pick. Dash out. Second pick. Third pick if I want to take another one. Okay. Or I fall back to here. I have a blade. Okay. Okay. And then. That's another thing. I would, I would uh, say you, you do, your two biggest opportunities there is the money system and understanding that you are the queen of the board as an offer. You're the queen. Mm -hmm. You control space. You're the boss. Let mm -hmm. them take space without having to pay the toll booth operator their toll. What were your top takeaways from today? Definitely the op and the ego. Like the oping was nice. That um, test piece mentality, like the queen mentality. I always viewed oping. I viewed oping very differently from how you viewed oping. And I think your view on it is a lot better than how I view it.